Well, over the weekend, President Cyril Ramaphosa signed a new act into law to try and combat corruption in local government. Its technical name is the Municipal Systems Amendment Act. You'll know, of course, of all of the problems. Do I need to give you a list? All of the problems of corruption in councils. Look at the reporting we've seen from Rofilware in Northwest just 20 minutes ago. It's very hard to bring accountability, even to blacklist suppliers who benefit from corruption. Well, let's find out about, a bit more about this. Dr. Pandile Ndlitsiawana is an expert on local governments. He joins us now. Dr. Ndlitsiawana, good afternoon to you and thank you for your time. Whenever a new law comes into force, we're very optimistic it's going to make major changes. Uh, do you think this law is going to make major changes? Will it bring more accountability in local government? Yes, I think so, Stephen. I think it will. Um, uh, it, it does a lot of things. Uh, firstly, uh, uh, the one that says uh, politicians can no longer be officials. Uh, the, the case of, of, of distorted lines of accountability where your mayor uh, would be a municipal manager, for example, and then, you know, uh, be, uh, be strong at that level, uh, control the municipality where, where he controls the party as well. So it, it, it kind of uh, prohibits that um, uh, officials uh, ca cannot be uh, politicians strictly. So mayors, you know, the, the, the top five would have to run their own uh, course. And they are not involved in the administration. Uh, and secondly, it kind of um, makes make sure that uh, appointments, uh, the advertisements are done nationally. Uh, uh, the appointments in the news administration uh, is competitive. You attract the national pool of players. Uh, you don't appoint your cronies so that you, you further your, your, your corrupt interests. So, so, so yes, I'm, I'm optimistic that it's going to, 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 to do what it seeks to do. We're joined now also by Taboho Kass, uh, trustee at Public Interest. Uh, Taboho, good afternoon to you and thank you for joining our conversation. We've seen laws come in, people hope that they'll make a change. It also requires real effort. It actually requires people to blow the whistle. It requires active citizens as well, doesn't it? It certainly does. Um, and, and I think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a step in the right direction, one would say. Um, and to the extent that it seems to be um, to, to have, to have um, making some inroads on in, insofar as timing the, the 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 corruption, the endemic corruption, especially at the local level. I think it's it's a, it's, a, it's a piece of legislation in the in the right direction. Um, Dr. Ndlitsiawana, um, we've seen huge problems in local government, and and the obvious problem, the obvious response will be well, people in local government often don't just have one person in charge, that person is part of a network. We see, uh, to use as an example, in ANC local politics, people will campaign as slates, for example. Um, that's much harder to stop, isn't it? It's much harder to stop a group of people working together. One is a municipal manager, uh, one is a mayor or a speaker or whatever it is. Uh, I don't know if this law is going to stop that from happening. Well, well this law you know, is accompanied by an, a, a suit of other laws. Uh, for example, the MFMA uh, uh, assists this law in saying that uh, politicians are not involved at all uh, when it comes to procurement, uh, supply chain management uh, implementation. They, their role only ends at, at, at making the policy and then the implementation of the policy. So they all won't be involved in, in, in the bidding process, the entire process. It's the MM strictly. Uh, so, so, so it, it does assist this law in that sense because, like I said initially, uh, politicians are no longer now involved. Uh, they can't be officials. Uh, they, 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 they stay outside literally. And the MFMA uh, uh, in section 117 says you don't, you don't get involved in the procurement processes. Uh, we know, we know, we know that um, that's the law saying, uh, but, but the practice might be different. For example, the, the, the politician might influence the processes uh, through uh, appointment. For example, we know the MM is appointed by politicians. So, so, so the MM, in a sense, is, is, is obligated, is um, indebted to, to politicians. So uh, the, 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 the ground out there is murky. It's not as clear cut. Um, do you think, Dr. Lindsay, or one other, that this may actually just lead to... So, so municipal managers are appointed, if I remember correctly, by a vote in council. And this is why sometimes already there are high levels of contestation. So in Nelson Mandela Bay, as I understand it, also there are two people who both claim 
to have been elected to or appointed to the position by the same council. Uh, it's one coalition there. Um, are we going to see bigger political fights over who's the municipal manager? Because if you appoint your friend to that role or your ally, well, then you kind of get what you wanted in the first place. Yes, um, but you see that there, 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 there are external uh, supervisions, there are external monitoring mechanisms to these things. Um, you appoint the municipal manager, fine, he's in charge of the, of, of the administration, he's the accounting officer. Uh, every decision taken at, at that level is by the municipal manager. But when it comes to serious decisions like procurements, like I'm saying, uh, councillor are not involved, it would be other spheres, including the Auditor General and National Treasurer and Provincial Treasurer would be uh, monitoring that, that, that process. Mm -hmm. So councillors are not directly involved at that level, uh, even though they might have an influence uh, because they appointed the person, and I'm saying uh, this person might be indebted to these councillors, but their influence might be indirect. Uh, um, their influence might be indirect. It would be the NM or a senior official who would be, who would be corrupt then uh, uh, to, to open the door, not directly councillors uh, jumping in, influencing, because they are part, uh, from, they are part from doing that. And in fact, the law says uh, once a councillor is found to have, uh, to have interfered, uh, um, uh, the sanction for that is five years or a fine appropriate to, to that. To Boko Cast, there are other issues and there are other ways that we've tried to bring accountability in for council. So, for example, the National Treasury keeps a blacklist of uh, companies, of suppliers that have basically uh, engaged in corruption in contracts with government and with councils. Uh, that measure doesn't seem to be working. People are very frustrated with that. Do we need to tighten that up as well? If I respond to that, uh, Stephen, if you'd allow with your, with your leave, please, if I may. Go ahead. Uh, you know, respond to what my colleague has just said. Uh, indeed, one, when we are, we all are in agreement that this is a step in the right direction. But I'm not as as uh, very hopeful or energized as he seems to be in the sense that this is not a panacea if this is what we think it is going to be, because the problems have been deep seated. They are deep seated within uh, local municipalities insofar as. Uh, employment and corruption within that space is concerned. We've got people who have been employed just because they are members, not only members of a political, fellow political party, but because they are also members of families. So we've got, we've got nepotism and, 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 uh, and patron, you know, they're using this as to patronize, um, uh, those to whom they owe favors within the political cycle. So it's not going to be an easy, um, it's not going to be an instrument that's going to be used as a magic wand to reach uh, local municipalities of municipalities of of problems. But be that as it may, uh, also insofar as this centralisation of uh, uh, employment, um, uh, it's, it's uh, for me it, it's all too good in on paper. But like many other legislations or regulations. Uh, government has failed to implement them. We've got the best laws in this world, and you just refer to the restricted supplier database. For me, that is a tool that ought to be important. That should be a tool that National Treasury and everybody within procurement space in government ought to be using as saying, if you don't um, obey the laws, this is what's going to happen to you. But we know that the restricted supplier database is not achieving the desired effect insofar as it is concerned. In fact, we've got companies who have been um, found guilty over corruption, fraud, or any other charges, and individuals by courts of law whose names do not appear on the list or, or on the supply uh, database because it relies on other officials to, 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 to comply and submit what is required for national treasury to list those individuals or, or entities. So quite honestly, um, for, for us, it is all here. He, here's, we, we, it's all talk. So, you know, we'll see. Um, we'll see. The, 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 the proof of the pudding is the eating as the same goes. Um, Dr. Litsiawana, I mean, there's obviously other things that we can do. Maybe we should do. This law has been a long time in the making. There's been big arguments about it. It's now law. Uh, it's always tempting to sort of change the law and hope the problem goes away. We realize that, as Tabokho reminds us, it's a lot more complicated than that. Are there other measures? Um, do we need more transparency? Sometimes we have a lot of transparency around contracts, and yet it still doesn't seem to stop corruption. We saw that during the PPE scandals. 
The one thing I would, I would recommend uh, for local government uh, is professionalization of the senior management. Uh, back, 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 uh, way back, Stephen, there, was, uh, there were two acts, the Professional Accountants Act and the Municipal Accountants Act. Those acts professionalized uh, the sector, the senior management, uh, in the sense like uh, you would have your lawyers, uh, uh, when they do something wrong, uh, they, they, they report uh, uh, to, 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 to the legal counsel. So, 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 um, uh, they, they were professional in that sense. I think uh, what would assist in this regard uh, would, would, would be to, to have those kind of uh, institutes where municipal managers, for example, would belong to an institute um, uh, and senior managers, especially uh, finance officials. Uh, there are institutes that are out there, but they are not recognized by law. Uh, there is one called SIGFARO and the, one, the other one called ILGM, Institute of Local Carbon Management. Those institutes kind of took over uh, from the SY Institute of Town Clerks uh, uh, that operated back then. So I think we need that system uh, to ensure that uh, a, a municipal manager or an official who does you know, uh, wrong things, uh, engages in corrupt practices, um, is not only subjected to municipal processes, but uh, the professional body uh, jumps in on the allegations of, of, uh, of mere corruption. Uh, on mere allegations, they jump in, they don't wait for the municipal process. So I would recommend that uh, for local government, uh, so that it becomes professional. Uh, we see results all around, uh, um, uh, and, and we, we, that can add also to what my colleague is saying, to say that even the, that database of, of, of the National Treasury is not is not populated because uh, officials themselves not report uh, the delinquents. So 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 that that would assist in a sense. And and I was also called on the upper spheres of government, especially the, the provincial treasury, to play uh, its robust monitoring role. The, the, the law is clear in that regard to say the, the provincial treasury must monitor local government, support them when needed, and intervene when things go wrong, uh, where an executive obligation is not fulfilled. So, so provincial treasury should play that robust role in uh, assisting municipalities. I agree, the problems uh, out there are endemic uh, and are long-standing. Uh, so, so they need robust intervention and they need this kind of uh, assistance uh, or uh, intervention. I'm proposing professionalization of the of the of senior management. So much more to do, gentlemen. Thank you very much indeed. A lot more work, of course, to do in trying to fix local government. Dr. Pendile Nlitsia Wana is an expert on local government. Tabo Kass is a political commentator and trustee at Public Interest SA.